from um, now I'm here with my wife Paula. You probably heard her on earlier videos in uh, the Marcus. Um, we uh, really thank him for, for, for putting together all the videos and the music and everything. And uh, today we're just having a session to where uh, we just having Bible study and we bring in some important things forward because as we see today, and this is what I've been saying from the beginning, um, is understanding the time. And because people don't understand the time, they don't see what's going on. And partly, mostly because of that, uh, because they don't understand the time is what they're being taught in the churches. So... This video is um, is just as important because now the doors of the church are closed, and we have to look at uh, why is that? Because somehow a man got, but man don't have any power. Even Satan don't have no power over God. Mm -hmm. So we really have to look at this because when you look at uh, all the videos, they say, well, the coronavirus is stopping us from coming together and this, this, this. Coronavirus carries no power. You know, all the powers of God. So if the doors are shut and not just uh, in America, but all over the world, and it's not just Christianity, it's, it's also uh, Judaism, uh, um, Muslim, Hinduism, any type of gathering, and sometimes in, in 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 we have to look at how the Lord look at things, how God look at things, because if He shut it up, that means He don't want to hear it anymore. And to get a better understanding, He don't want to hear all the services and all the the joy and 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 in the the uh, uh, holy days and all of that because it has become an abomination unto his sight. So in order for us to get an understanding of this, we we're going to have to go through the, to the word and see what's really going on. So let us take a look at chapter 32 of Exodus. And let's start with verse 1. Now we have to look at this very closely because we're going to draw a parallel to what was going on in the with the children of Israel versus what we see today. Uh, let's go. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods, which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that has brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we want not what is become of him. So in this time, Moses was the mediator between the people of Israel and the people, I mean, and God. He's the mediator. So today, the same actions are going on because people have rejected Jesus and therefore they have rejected their mediator. Now, when you begin to do that, then you begin to pick up other rituals and and traditions and stuff that's not of God. So this is what's very, very important. Now we're going to try to skip down through this to get um, uh, to go through this kind of quickly. So let's skip down to verse 7. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go get thee down. For thy people which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf and have worshipped it and have sacrificed thereunto and said, These be, they, these be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore let me alone, that my wrath may wax hot against them, and that I may consume them, and I will make of thee a great nation. 
Now, this is the part that's very important because when things stop, that means the Lord is tired of hearing it. Now, when he said that during the time of quietness, what is he doing? He's saying, my wrath has been a wax hot against these people. So when you start bringing Kanye West up into the church and, and all this stuff and, and, and you start having homosexuals uh, uh, singing before the Lord and all this and these abominations and you rituals and, and falling all out in, 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 in front of the Lord, the Lord said, let me alone that my anger may wax hot against these people. So the problem is, is this. At this time... And at this point, you're going to need a mediator because judgment now has went forward. So when the Lord said, you know, now I want you to, okay, let's, let's go on. Let's go on. Verse 11. And Moses besought the Lord his God and said, Lord, why doth thy wrath wax hot against thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? So now the mediator is talking. The question is, who is talking on your behalf today? Because if you don't accept Jesus, who's talking on your behalf? If, if you're putting Jesus aside and doing your own things and practicing your own ways, who is speaking for you? Because as this go on, you're going to see how serious this really is. Verse 12, wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say, for mischief did he bring them out, to slay them in the mountains, and to consume them from the face of the earth. Turn from thy fierce wrath, and repent of this evil against thy people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants, to whom thou swearest thine own self, and saidest unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have spoken of will I give unto your seed and they shall inherit it forever. Mm -hmm. And the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. Now, why did the Lord repent? Because there was a mediator. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now what it's going to break down to is who's on Jesus' side and who's not on Jesus' side. Whoever's on Jesus' side, he's going to mediate for you, and now the God is going to set up a way for you to pay for this sin and be saved. But for those who who are not uh, 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 acceptors of Jesus Christ, those who are not accepted of the Son of God, you're going to be in trouble because there is nobody in front of God to speak on your behalf. Mm -hmm. Let's skip down to verse 25. And when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies. Okay, so this is the part right here. Who have made them naked? <clears throat> it was Aaron. And Moses saw that the people was naked because of the sins. See, as we go on today, it's the leaders that are among you that are making you naked before the Lord. So there's a series of things that got to be done now so that the wrath of the Lord will pass by you. Because for sure that if all these kingdoms and all these nations today have shut up the doors of the church, you are under judgment. You are under judgment. There's no doubt about it. You're under judgment. And it also means that everything that you was doing it was shameful it mm. wasn't it wasn't of God mm. even though it's put in the name of God it's not of God mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's been mixed and mingled and we're gonna we, we're, we're the whoredoms of Babylon and we're gonna see that as we go on go ahead verse 26 then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said who is on the Lord's side let him come unto me. And all, the, Go ahead. and all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. So, if we say that this is the parallel, this is what Jesus is going to do. Hmm. 
He gonna show he gonna show up and he's gonna ask this question. Uh -huh. All those who are on my side come unto me. Uh -huh. And we're gonna see as as we go on what's gonna happen. Now when we we've been saying and I've been doing these videos for over seven years and been saying flee Babylon, come out of her, my people. This is the call. And people didn't people took it lightly up to this point. They have taken it lightly. Now let's see what happens afterward. Go ahead. Verse 27. And he said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, put every man his sword by his side, and go in and out from the gate to gate, from gate to gate throughout the camp, and slay every man his brother, and every man his companion, and every man his neighbor. Mm -hmm. And the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses, and there fell of the people that day about three thousand men. Mm, go ahead. For Moses had said, Consecrate yourselves today to the Lord, even every man upon his son and upon his brother, that he may bestow upon you a blessing this day. The thing is, once the judgment have taken place by the Lord, the, the mediator, which is Jesus Christ, have to separate you from the people. Mm -hmm. See, at first, you was allowed to worship among everybody, and, and you love that type of worship when the Lord was calling you out. Now the Lord is going to uh, set up a way to separate you from the rest of the world. And because you didn't adhere to what it, what it was he was saying beforehand, so now he's going to set up a different way. So let's, let's skip to... Uh, 30, let's go down to 32. This is Moses. Oh, 31. Go ahead. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Oh, this people have sinned a great sin and have made them gods of gold. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book which thou hast written. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever hath sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. So, what is that saying? Nobody on this earth can cover you. Mm. Nobody on this earth can cover you. And even Moses said, you know, hey, I put my life in the life of the people. And the Lord said, no. No, everybody who has sinned against me, they the ones that's going to have to pay. Mm -hmm. And we talked about it in other videos when he said, what is what is those that have sinned against the Lord? Because people, people tend to look at, um, um, you know, if I committed adultery or whatever. So sin against the Lord is just taking lightly his word when he, when he sent the word through. And not only that, it's, it's, when, it's, it's when we have read before when they had rejected Moses. Basically, they got tired of waiting and mm -hmm. they did their own thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, it's the same way with Jesus. When you when you reject Jesus, you have sinned against the Lord. Mm -hmm. And therefore, Jesus can't mediate for you what we've been talking about this mm -hmm. whole time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then too, just like uh, with the children of Israel, when they were um, coming out of Egypt and the Lord was continuously showing himself unto them over and over and over. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in the end, the Lord said, you know, it's basically because you have no faith in me is the reason why I have to cast you out. It's because you simply do, do not believe and you don't have faith. Mm -hmm. And so, like you were saying, Marcus, a lot of people, they think that sin is, you know, adultery or murder or something like that, which those are. But don't fool yourself into thinking that, oh, I'm okay. Because, mm -hmm. You know, I don't commit fornication. I don't. I haven't killed anybody. I don't do. I don't steal. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have that faith, mm -hmm. um, that 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 God is calling you to, then yes, then you have transgressed against Him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. So let's let's move on. Let's switch over to one chapter over to thirty three because I want to get 
to the point to where we are today, because I believe that we can we can draw a parallel to what happened at that time versus what happened today, because people know what goes on in these uh, gatherings, you know. So let's 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 uh, let's thirty three and let's skip down to uh, verse five. For the Lord had said unto Moses, Say unto the children of Israel, Ye are a stiff-necked people. I will come up into the midst of thee in a moment, and consume thee. Therefore now put off thy ornaments from thee, that I may know what to do unto thee. So when I say that you are in a, a time of judgment, because when the Lord said, Strip off your ornaments, the, which is the things that the, the, the way that you the, the whole desire of um, uh, the association and coming together. He said, stop it all and take it off. In other words, it's like in this moment, you should be at a time of humbling yourself mm -hmm. before the Lord. Mm -hmm. But you're not humbling yourself because you don't understand what's going on. You don't understand that you just mm -hmm. witnessed that you entered into judgment. Because men do not have the power to shut the doors of all of all these churches. This is done by God. Mm -hmm. Now, even though there's a virus, a plague, and all of that, if the Lord sent out of a out of plague, you you won't be alive to even to, to be talking today. So all this is 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 your enemies doing. Because the Lord has turned you over into the hand of your enemies, now you're going to need a deliverer. You're going to need a you're going to need a mediator, and you're going to need a deliverer mm -hmm. because you're now in the hands of your enemies, and you don't even know it. You you search YouTube. Everybody's <laughs> talking about what's going to happen after the coronavirus is passed. You're in the hands of your enemies, and you don't know it. Uh, keep reading. Now the part the part that I want to say here. Is the Lord said, I'm going to come into the midst of thee mm -hmm. and consume thee. So now something is going to have to happen here. Because the thing is that the Lord dwelt in the midst of Israel. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now Moses is going to have to do something, which is the mediator. He's going to have to do something to keep the Lord from coming into the midst. Mm -hmm. Because now the children of Israel... The Lord is in the midst of the children of Israel and they are naked. Mm -hmm. Keep that in mind. The Lord is in the midst of the children of Israel and they are naked during a time of judgment. Mm -hmm. So the verdict is death. That's it. So now something got to be done. Okay, let's 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 continue to look. Go ahead. Verse 6. And the children of Israel stripped themselves of their ornaments by the Mount Horeb. And Moses took the tabernacle and pitched it without the camp. Okay, now here is the poor. The tabernacle can no longer be in the midst of the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. He had to now take it without the camp. This is this is this is important. This is something that your leader should have told you, mm -hmm. it, 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 because once the Lord bring in judgment, something got to happen. Now he's saying. Basically, I'm in the midst of you, and I'm going to consume you. So what the what Moses did, he took the tabernacle and he removed it to the outside of the camp to save the people. See what I'm saying? So if you don't have the mediator of Jesus, the communication between uh, uh, God and man, then you are the judgment. See, you thought that Jesus wasn't that important. But you see how Moses was important in this situation because if Moses didn't remove this tabernacle, they would have been in the midst of the wrath of God. Go ahead. I'll start over at seven. And Moses took the tabernacle and pitched it without the camp, afar off from the camp, and called it the tabernacle of the congregation. Okay, so now the name is called tabernacle of congregation. Mm -hmm. That means tent of meeting. It means it means a congregation by appointment, which means now you cannot go before God mm -hmm. unless you are appointed to. 
unless you are appointed to. So if this if this happened today, then that means Jesus is setting up a tabernacle outside in the wilderness. Okay, so let's go. And it came to pass that everyone which sought the Lord went out unto the tabernacle of the congregation, which was without the camp. In order for you to seek the Lord, you're going to have to come out. Exactly. That's what. That's the whole sin from the beginning. Mm -hmm. If you want to stay among your people, you want to stay among uh, 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 your church brothers and sisters and all of that, then uh, you cannot seek the Lord being among them. Hmm. Because the whole thing now, the whole world and all the nations is now under judgment. So you need to find out where exactly is the Lord setting up his tabernacle. Because that got to be separate. Hmm. Because the Lord no longer dwells in the midst of the, of the people. Amen. Okay, so this is serious. And one thing I want to point out, too, is that um, when it says that everyone which sought the Lord went out unto the tabernacle. So went out is an action. Mm -hmm. That means that they had to remove themselves. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times in these, um, a lot of people will say, well, you know, I'm just waiting on the Lord to make a way. Or I'm just waiting on the Lord to um, to make provisions for me. to. No, no, no. These people, there was an action. They had to remove themselves. And yes, the Lord is calling you at the whole time. But you can't just sit in one place and say, well, I'll just sit here until whatever. These people actually, it says, when those who sought the Lord went out unto the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. So that means that you literally have to remove yourself mm -hmm. to go unto the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Verse 8, and it came to pass when Moses went out unto the tabernacle that all the people rose up and stood every man at his tent door and looked after Moses. Okay, so we're everybody now at their own tent, just like you at your, in your own house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And looked after Moses until he was gone into the tabernacle. And it came to pass as Moses entered into the tabernacle, the cloudy pillar descended. And stood at the door of the tabernacle. And the Lord talked with Moses. And all the people saw the cloudy pillar stand at the tabernacle door. And all the people rose up and worshipped. Every man in his tent door. You see that? Now he said, he said in, in John chapter 4. Jesus had already said this. That the time cometh and now is that you should not worship the Lord either on a, on a mountain or in Jerusalem, but they that worship the Lord must worship him in spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. For the Lord seeketh such to worship. So the, the, the part is now everybody is watching Moses. Mm -hmm. All the eyes are on Moses. Now, let's skip to the end. And, and um, let's go, let's go today to the, to the day's time and we're going to deal with with uh, things that's pertaining unto the to the uh, to the future, and see is this is the same. Um, let's go to Zechariah chapter nine. Let's start at verse one. The burden of the word of the Lord in the land of Hadrach and Damascus shall be the rest thereof. Now the Bible said, according to the word. He said the land of Hebron and Damascus. So what's between Hebron and Damascus? That's Mount Hermon, which is Zion. It says, it shall be the rest thereof. Now go ahead. When the eyes of man, as of all the tribes of Israel, shall be toward the Lord. Now he's saying that in this place, all the eyes of man, as of all the eyes of the tribes of children of Israel, shall be towards the Lord. Okay, so so in this point right here, that means that Jesus is beginning to set up his tabernacle. Hmm. Okay, so now let's turn to Matthew chapter 16, 
And then we're going to read um, verse 17 and 18. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed are those, I'm sorry, blessed are thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So now you see in how Jesus is setting up He's going to set up his church outside the camp. Hmm. Okay, so he's saying here that upon this rock, he's talking about this mountain. Upon this mountain, I shall build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So when you say gates of hell, he's talking about death. Hmm. Okay, so the thing is, is that just as well as, as Moses had to set up the tabernacle outside the camp, Jesus now had to set up his church outside from the nations. And he's telling you exactly where he is. He said between Hadrach and Damascus. Now, when we, we have another video that's saying uh, the wilderness of the Lamb, that gives more information about where the Lord is going to set up his church. Now, to give more clarity on that, we're going to skip to uh, Peter. Now, let us turn to 2 Peter chapter 1, and we will start with verse 16. <clears throat> For we have not followed cunningly devised fables, when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Now, now, Peter now is going to give a description of this same verse that when, when Jesus said the gates of hell should not prevail against. Mm -hmm. So what he's saying is, he said, I'm going, to set up, I'm going to set up my church just as well as the tabernacle or the tent of meeting was set up by Moses. Mm -hmm. You got to know this stuff. Because now the Lord no longer dwell in the midst of the people. Just like then when uh, Moses set up the tabernacle outside the camp, and they said those who those who sought the Lord, sought the Lord went mm -hmm. out and uh, mm -hmm. found went out to the tabernacle. So it's just like that today, when the when the Lord is no longer in the midst of the nation, then you have to follow Him mm -hmm. outside of the nations exactly. to where He to where He uh, resides at. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is this is really important. Now, when Jesus said, "Upon this rock I shall build my church," let's 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 look at what what Peter says. Let's go to verse seventeen, Goldie. For he received from God the Father honor and glory. When there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Mm -hmm. And this voice which came from heaven, we heard. When we were with him in the holy mountain. Now he said he was with Jesus in the holy mountain where he said this place is where I'm going to build my church. Peter said, now I'm not telling you fables. Hmm. See, that's what, that's, what your, that's, that's what your preachers and false prophets, that's what they are prophesying unto you, fables. Hmm. He's saying that that. I have the authority here because I was there. I seen it. Mm -hmm. He said, I seen the holy mountain and Jesus claiming this mountain and the voice came from heaven and gave Jesus the authority. This is my beloved son. You hear him. Not Moses, not Elijah. They heard it. They heard the voice from God himself. So he's telling you He's saying, uh, uh, we was our witnesses. This is not a fable or, 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 a, uh, or a rumor. We was there ourselves. 
Now let's talk more about this holy mountain because the thing is, this is where the Lord said, I'm going to set my church. Go ahead. Uh, I mean, excuse me. Let's go to Isaiah chapter um, 20. Uh, let's go to Isaiah chapter 4. Because the word today, you should know this, the word today is coming, is, is being revealed. It ain't about the people. It's about the revelation of the word. But you've been taught to reject the word and reject Jesus Christ, so therefore there's no understanding of the word. Uh, Isaiah chapter 4 and... Let's start in verse 5. And the Lord will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion and upon her assemblies a cloud and smoke by day and the shining of a flaming fire by night. For upon all the glory shall be a defense. So, is this not the same setup that was going on in, in, in the wilderness? Hmm. Verse 6. And there shall be a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime from the heat, and for a place of refuge, and for a covert from storm and from rain. You can't get no you can't get no plainer than that. Everything that Moses was going through and the children of Israel was going through was a demonstration of what? All the nations will see with their eyes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this shows much more that the Lord is setting up a place for refuge. Mm -hmm. And you and he's not in the midst of you in the nations. You have to come out and seek the Lord. Mm -hmm. And it's because of the sin of the nations. Let's go up to Isaiah chapter 25. More the same thing. Let's start with verse 4. For thou hast been a strength to the poor, a strength to the needy in his distress, a refuge from the storm, a shadow from the heat, when the blast of the terrible ones is as a storm against the wall. Okay, so the Lord had already said, I'm going to set some terrible ones hmm. upon the nations, and this is the judgment of the Lord. He's bringing forth, he went, when, when we talked about earlier that I'm turning you over into the hands of, of your enemies, they have devised a plan to destroy you. But the Lord said, those who are on, on, those who are on my side, just as well as Moses said, those who are on my side, you come to me. Mm -hmm. And when you come to me, he said, I'm going to be a refuge for, for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, keep, let's keep reading. Verse 5, thou shalt bring down the noise of strangers as the heat in a dry place, even the heat with the shadow of a cloud. The branch of the terrible ones shall be brought low. Now, the Lord said that the branch of the terrible ones should be brought low. Now, is that in the midst of you in the nations, or where does that happen at? Go ahead, let's read. And in this mountain shall the Lord of hosts make unto all people a feast of fat things, mm -hmm. A feast of wines on the lees, of fat things full of marrow, of wines on the lees well refined. Mm -hmm. sure. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all the people, and the veil that is spread over all nations. See, Babylon has, has uh, deceived you by sorceries. Mm. And he's saying, when I build my church on this mountain, the same mountain that, that Peter was on, he said, I'm going to destroy the covering cast. Mm -hmm. And in this mountain, there's going to be uh, a refuge and food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go verse 8. He will swallow up death in victory, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from off all faces. And the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth. For the Lord hath spoken it. He said, I promised it. When he said, I'm doing it on this mountain. He said, in this mountain, mm -hmm. 
The same thing that Peter said. This is the voice I heard from God in this mountain, and I'm a witness of it. On the holy mountain. In Mount Zion. Okay, so we see in this. So let's see the other side, because the thing is, people are not going to believe this. Hmm. So this is what's going to happen, because most people are just not going to believe this. So let's look in detail why the Lord is doing what he's doing. Let's go to uh, Jeremiah. Let's look at um, 22. Let's look at 22 of, of Jeremiah chapter 5. And he starts out, he started out with a question. Fear ye not me, saith the Lord, will ye not tremble at my presence, which have placed the sand for the bound of the sea by a perpetual decree, that it cannot pass it. And though the waves thereof toss themselves, yet can they not prevail. Though they roar, yet can they not pass over it. Now, here's the question. He said, do you not fear me? And the thing is, is that what made the judgment come upon the children of Israel is not what they was doing in Egypt. Mm. It's what they was doing in the presence of the Lord. Mm, 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 mm. So here's the, the point today. What brought the judgment on and on the churches? Now, if you try to reopen them just like Jesus, just like, just like after Jesus uh, uh, died and the, and the uh, veil was rent from top to bottom that means it was over with for the for, for the temple now when they kept on with their sacrifices eventually Rome came in and destroyed them and, and the temple mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because they didn't know what they didn't know their time so he's saying here see all these abominations have entered into the churches and people are doing this in the name of the Lord mm -hmm. and they're not fearing the Lord because of this. Mm -hmm. See, if you're doing this stuff outside and in other places, then that'll be one thing. And then when you come to the Lord, you humbling yourself to the Lord and forgiving you and, and, and uh, asking the Lord for forgiveness of your sins. But now the abominations have entered into the churches. Mm -hmm. You invite people all on the outside to come in and practice all types of abomination. Mm -hmm. And you saying, oh, okay, well, let's not judge them as long as they're in the house of the Lord. The Lord said, do you not fear me? Who are you fearing? Mm -hmm. Are you fearing the person that's bringing the abominations in mm -hmm. because of their reputation? Or he's saying, do you, not, do, you, do you fear me? Do you not fear me? And that's the problem. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, go ahead. But this people have a revolting and a rebellious heart. They are re revolted and gone. Neither say they, neither say they in their heart. Let us now fear the Lord our God that giveth rain, both the former and the latter, in His season. He reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. Now watch what goes on. Let's read. Twenty-five. Your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withholden good things from you. For among my people are found wicked men. They lay wait as he that set his snares. They set a trap, they catch men. So the thing is, is that now the wicked men have now become preachers. Mm -hmm. They become leaders in the church. Mm -hmm. And when the Lord said, let the wheat and tares grow together, uh, during the har to, until the harvest, the tares was planted by Satan. Mm. That means there is no uh, form of righteousness in a tear. Okay, or a weed. There is no form of righteousness in that weed. Mm. That weed was planted by a wicked person. I mean, uh, was planted was a wicked person that was planted by Satan himself, and that's basically. To make you naked. Mm. 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 Go ahead. 27. As a cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. Therefore, they are become great and wax and rich. And see, this is the reason why these preachers want you to get back in church so you can make them <laughs> rich. I'm telling you. This is the reason why they want you to come 
and, and, and associate on YouTube and all that so they can continue to get their money. But see, the Lord has disrupted that yeah. so that you can see. Because he's trying to show that he's not among mm -hmm. these systems anymore. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. See, Satan already know he's going to get his whooping. But what Satan is doing now, he's saying, well, uh, my uh, kingdom is going to get uh, destroyed for a while, for a minute. But I'm going to take everybody with me. I'm not going out by myself. Mm. So everybody that's in that system, among all of that, is like we, it's like what uh, Daddy said. He uh, he he got you naked and you're shameless. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. so not only is he getting destroyed, but you getting destroyed with him because you you are in the midst of all of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now we're getting into the reason why. Uh, uh, the the people today are associated with the same people that was in the wilderness, with the same children of Israel that was in the wilderness. Now we're drawing a parallel about really what's going on. Okay, skip over to Jer Jeremiah chapter eight, and let's 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 start at verse seven. Yeah, the stark, I'm sorry, the stork in the heaven knoweth her appointed times, and the turtle and the crane and the swallow observe the time of their coming. But my people know not the judgment of the Lord. And that's why I say you have entered into judgment mm -hmm. and you do not know it. Mm -hmm. Verse 8, go here. How do ye say we are wise and the law of the Lord is with us? Mm -hmm. Lo, certainly in vain made he it. The pen of the scribes is in vain. So, see, you're reading books. Mm -hmm. And now the books and stuff like that, see, you, you know, people want to know that, that they, they, they seek in knowledge and they're associating this with God. See, all these maps about, well, Israel is not here mm -hmm. and, and it's black people only for... The people of Israel and, and other people saying, yeah, you know, this book that's written that we're going to be raptured out of here. And all these religions got all these teachings. Mm -hmm. But the Lord has shut the door about every last one of them. He said, because of the lying pen of the scribes, because the scribes been lying to you. Mm -hmm. Even, even, you know, over in Israel, here near us, uh, you got... You got uh, all these uh, um, uh, Orthodox Jews dressed in black, mm -hmm. steady making rules about what you should and should not do, and what like like they they the ones that's in authority <laughs> to give the law. But the Lord said they pen is lying. Mm -hmm. All the rules that they saying is lying. It didn't come from me. Mm -hmm. They made it up. He said this is what's got you naked. Go ahead. The wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected the word of the Lord, and what wisdom is in them? Ashamed means naked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, there's no wisdom in them, and you follow them. Mm -hmm. and, you, and you love to do that. Because it comes with all the, 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 uh, the uh, associations and social gatherings and partyings and all that kind of stuff. He said this is what made you naked. Now let's let's skip over to Jeremiah 23 and just give even more. And we'll start at verse 25. This is the reason why the Lord had to build his church separate. Mm. And that those who want to seek the Lord have to come out to him. This is the reason why, but we're going to see even more. Go ahead. I Tw have, okay, yeah, verse 25, go ahead. I have heard what the prophet said, that prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. You see, and that's all you see on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's all you see standing before the churches. Oh, I got a dream that the Lord had told me about you and this and you and this. Now, now you 
shall have this and, and you shall have that. That's all we get nowadays. All people prophesying. But let's see what the Lord say about it. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yeah, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart. Mm -hmm. Which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. Now, he's saying here, these are the men that are among you, that they are tares. He said, which think to cause my people to forget my name. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is what made you naked. Now, we read in the other verse for what purpose it is. So he says, so they can wax fat in their mm -hmm. pockets mm -hmm. with your money. Mm -hmm. Now, we've been doing these videos well over seven years. You haven't seen at no point have I asked anybody for any money. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? So, therefore, there should be a difference between the people that is of this world and the people that's of God. He's saying the people that's, that's of Satan wax rich. They looking to wax rich off of you. Okay, keep going. The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chafe to the wheat? So, said the Lord. So what is he saying here? He's saying that the person that's speaking dreams... Because everybody quote, well, you know, in the last days, people shall shall uh, be dreaming dreams. But he's saying, the prophet that has dreams, let him tell dreams. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The word has already been written. There is nothing new. Mm -hmm. And he said, you're going to be taught by the Holy Spirit. So why are you still listening to dreams? Why are you still listening to to people that, that's prophesying lies. He's saying the word is written and you need to stand on the word faithfully. I'm telling you, this is where I'm going to reset up my church and I'm no longer in the midst of you. This is this is done, this is said by the word. We haven't said nothing of our own uh, accord. We telling you what the word is saying and we doing it faithfully. That's why we are here, faithfully. But as you can see, nobody here but us. Why? <laughs> because everybody is listening to dreams mm -hmm. and, and false prophets. Mm -hmm. So in the end, we're going to see uh, uh, which is stronger. The, the word of the prophets, the word of your teachers, or the word of, of, law, of the Lord. We're going to see. Because in order for you to do the word, so you have to do it faithfully. Mm -hmm. Amen. Go ahead. Verse 29. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm, this last part. What is the chaff from the wheat? And that's just what we said. The wheat and tares. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the tares, Jesus had already said, have been planted by Satan. Mm -hmm. You need to know the difference between the wheat and the chaff. Or you need to know the difference between the wheat and the tares. And how do you know that? Jesus said, if they do not accord to my word, that's because they're not of me. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. Is not my word like as a fire, said the Lord? And like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. So this is the reason why we don't have to be worried, even though it's just us. Mm -hmm. Because we know that the word is fire. Mm -hmm. We know that what we say is true because mm -hmm. it's power associated with it. Mm -hmm. See, the kingdom of heaven is not in word, but in the power and the demonstration of power. That's why... We said, hey, you need to go where the Lord at. And these these videos we've been doing over seven years, we said you need to go where the Lord at. And people say you can't do that. And now we 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 hear where the place where the Lord say be. That's power. That's not by our own will and our own strength. It's by the power of God. So therefore, uh, the power of God is going to stand even in the end. So though your prophets are preaching, those that are of the Lord, you're going to have to make the same journey. You have to do the same journey. Go ahead. Therefore, behold, I am against the prophet, saith the Lord, that steal my words every one from his neighbor. So when they prophesy, what is they doing? They stealing the words from God. Mm -hmm. So when you listen to the prophe prophecy of these people, they stealing the words from God uh, 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 
out of your hearts and causing you to listen to fables. Mm -hmm. This is the reason why Peter said, you listen to me because we've been there. Mm -hmm. We're not, this, this, this is not fables. We telling you what you want to hear. If a prophet a prophet, then it should come true. They steady lying. Things are not coming true and you steady believing it. Go ahead. 31, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that use their tongues and say, he saith. Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell them and cause my people to err by their lies and by their likeness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them. Therefore, they shall not profit this people at all, saith the Lord. So if you listen to them, you... Even though the Lord said, my people, if you listen to them, it's not going to profit you. And that's the reason why you're in the judgment now and you don't know it. Okay, go ahead. 33. And when this people or the prophet or a priest shall ask thee, saying, what is the burden of the Lord? Thou shalt then say unto them, what burden? I will even forsake you, saith the Lord. Okay, so the thing is, what he's saying here, people are going to come right now during a time of judgment, and they're going to ask, what does the Lord say that we should do? Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, in return, he should say, I'm going to forsake you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to forsake mm -hmm. you. Now, why? Because you're in the midst of judgment. Mm -hmm. So, when you're in the midst of judgment, and the Lord said, I'm going to forsake you, we're going to look at this last part, because the Lord says, see, I'm going to save you, I'm going to save you, but the thing is, you didn't hear the word of God, people did not hear the word of God, and they did not follow his word. So as you enter into judgment, the, the, this is how the Lord is going to save people that's in the midst of judgment. Let's go to, um, let's go to Ezekiel 37. So what we're trying to do, we're trying to cover all points here. We're trying to cover the point that led up to the judgment we covering the point to where, or we just covered the point to why the Lord is judging you. And now we have to cover how the Lord is going to deliver you out of that judgment, how Jesus is going to deliver you out of that judgment. So the thing is, if you come into judgment and you don't set Jesus as your, as your uh, uh, mediator, then you already, there's no, there, you are, there's no hope for you. But for those who who has the testimony of Jesus and were led away and caught up in the judgment, let's see how the Lord said he's going to deliver. Ezekiel chapter 37. And um, you just have to listen to this, even though it's, it's long, you just have to listen to it. And it may not be important to you today, but it will be. As things begin to happen around you, it will be. Go ahead. Uh, start the story, verse 1. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy unto these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, mm -hmm. and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live. Mm -hmm. 
and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Mm -hmm. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. So everybody preached this, mm -hmm. but there's no understanding in it. Now, uh, uh, let's skip down to 11. Go ahead. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Mm -hmm. Behold, they say, our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Now, at some point, Israel was cut off. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see. Because when when people say Israel, that's, that's them in the land. But mm -hmm. we're going to see. Mm -hmm. Because if you brought under Jesus Christ, you are Israel. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, if you enter into the land of Israel, then you then the God of Israel is your God. So you are Israel. But we're going to see. Go ahead. We... Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Now, the Lord said before the gathering into Israel, you got to come up out of your grave. You got to be resurrected. Hmm. Who is he talking to? He talking to the people that have entered into judgment. Hmm. Go ahead. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O people, O my people. And brought you up out of your graves. So we're going to find out how people end up. He said, now these dry bones was laying everywhere. So it wasn't that people were being buried. It wasn't the ancient of people that has been buried over these. These were bones that was laying, laying across the land that has been dried up. Go ahead. 14. And shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live. And I shall place you in your own land. Then shall ye know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. Now, Jesus said those that had listened to him that was on his mountain, he said the gates of hell didn't prevail over them. Mm -hmm. But those who wasn't at the mountain, the gates of hell prevailed. Mm. Go ahead. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it, for Judah and for the children of Israel his companions. Then take another stick and write upon it, for Joseph the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel his companions. And join them one to another into one stick, and they shall become one in thine hand. And when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, Wilt thou not show us what thou meanest by these? Say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel his fellows, and will put them with him, even the stick of Judah, and make them one stick. And they shall be one in mine hand. Okay, so he's saying that they shall be one in his hand. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. now, he's saying this is after he opened their graves. Yes. Okay, so let's 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 put something in perspective here. So now we're gonna read. Uh, let's go to let's skip over two chapters, Ezekiel chapter thirty nine. Let's skip down to uh, verse 21. And I will set my glory among the heathen, and all the heathen shall see my judgment that I have executed, and my hand that I have laid upon them. Now watch this now. He's saying that the glory... Of the Lord and the sacredness of who God is shall be known among the heathens the way that the Lord dealt with Israel. Hmm. Go ahead. 
So the house of Israel shall know that I am the Lord their God from that day and forward. And the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity, because they trans transpa trespassed against me. Therefore hid I my face from them, and gave them into the hand of their enemies. So fell they all by the sword. He said, how many of them? All. All of them fell by the sword. According, Verse 24. According to their uncleanness and according to their transgressions have I done unto them and hid my face from them. So when the Lord was calling mm -hmm. and when the Lord uh, uh, um, calls his people to come to him and to separate from the nations and people stayed among the nations thinking that they was a part of the nations. Mm -hmm. The Lord said, I turned the nations against them and they slew, then they were slain by the by the sword. They were slain by the sword. So the Lord said, I'm going to have to resurrect you. And the thing I'm doing is, the reason why I'm doing this is because you fell in the judgment. Mm -hmm. So therefore I have turned your enemy, I have turned you over into the hand of your enemies, and your enemies is going to kill you. And this is the reason why uh, um, today this virus and all this kind of stuff is set up to lock you in. Hmm. And the Lord said, I'm going to hide my face and I'm not going to be among you. Hide means I'm not going to be among you. I'm not going to be in the midst of you and I'm not going to be protecting you anymore. Now you're going to be in the hands of your enemies. And they are going to kill you. And the <laughs> Lord said, I'm going to open the graves mm -hmm. and bring you out after they have done this unto you. That way they know my power and you at the same time know my power. Mm -hmm. Amen. And he said, I'm doing this because of your what? Uncleanliness, mm -hmm. which is means you're naked. And according to your transgression, why, what is the transgression? The Lord said, if you don't come out of Babylon, you're going to be a partaker of the sin. So therefore, you automatically under transgression. You automatically under sin. Go ahead. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, now will I bring again the captivity of Jacob and have mercy upon the whole house of Israel and will be jealous for my holy name. He said, now, at that point, at the point of the resurrection, I'll be good to you. Why he said that? Because he said, now you have paid for your sins. Double. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. 26. After that, they have borne their shame. What is the shame? Nakedness. Mm -hmm. You got the board. You got the board in. Mm -hmm. So when Moses said, I looked at the children of Israel and I saw that they were naked. Before the Lord, you have to pay for that. Everybody had to pay for it. Go ahead. And all their trespasses whereby they have trespassed against me, when they dwelt safely in their land, and none made them afraid. So when the Lord bring you back, say, so you, then you okay with him. But the thing is, in his eyesight, but the thing is, you got to bore your sin. And when he shut the door like this, you are in judgment. You have entered into judgment. See, it doesn't matter how big the preacher is. It doesn't matter how big the church is. It doesn't, have, doesn't matter how, big, how small the temple is. The doors are shut. So before the Lord, now you are naked before the Lord and you are shameful before, and you are in shame before him because he have entered into judgment and you don't know it. Mm. Go ahead. When I have brought them again from the people and gathered them out to their enemies' lands and am, and am sanctified in them in the sight of many nations. So when a prophet, a false prophet, a false preacher tell you, you need to wait on the Lord. The Lord is telling you exactly when he will bring you out. And that's after you've been given over to the sword to be slain. Mm -hmm. And I resurrect you, then I'm going to bring you out. Go ahead. Then shall they know that I am the Lord their God, which caused them to be led into captivity among the heathen. 
but I have gathered them unto their own land and have left none of them any more there. Neither will I hide my face any more from them, for I have poured out my spirit upon the house of Israel, saith the Lord God. Okay, so let's let's read the last one. Let's read, read the last one. Revelation chapter 14. Let's start with verse 1. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Sion. And with him an hundred forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. So, some people got sealed. Some people were sealed, and some people was in Mount Zion. Hmm. It says, I look and I behold. He said, I look and lo, and the lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him the hundred and forty four thousand having a father's name written into their forehead. Now, let's, let's, let's look at where everybody else was. Hmm. Verse 7, go ahead. Saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth, and the sea and the fountains of waters. And his is a sad part. It's a sad part. The Lord was with the, the, the uh, 144,000 mm -hmm. on Mount Zion mm -hmm. at the time this angel came out and said, fear God. Mm -hmm. Now, remember what we just read. He said, do you not fear me? Do you not fear me? Because you're practicing all this stuff that's going on. Mm -hmm. And because you don't fear the Lord, you have entered into the hour of his judgment. Mm. Let's go. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Babylon is fallen, what we've been saying. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark, in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. So the point is this. Once the Lord has entered in his judgment, and we have said in previous videos, the beast shall come forth. Why is that? Because now you have been turned into the hands of your enemies and the beast is the one that's going to make war with you mm -hmm. and overcome you. Mm -hmm. But you don't see that because you don't recognize, because people don't recognize that you're in the hour of judgment. Mm -hmm. The ones that did was sealed mm -hmm. and they was at Mount Zion. Mm -hmm. Now, the people of God who are not sealed and are not in Mount Zion, here's what the angel says to you. Verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me. Now, here's the voice from heaven saying, go ahead. Right. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Now watch this. Do you see what it just said? From now on, if you are of the Lord and you're not in Mount Zion, he said, you're going to die. But a blessing, if you can hold the word of Jesus Christ unto your death. He said, blessed, then you are blessed. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. So the so so he's saying, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord mm -hmm. from henceforth, from now on. Now, whatever the excuse may be, to whatever the reason may be, Jesus said that the one that's on the that's at the mount. He said, shall not taste death mm -hmm. until they see the coming of the mm -hmm. Son of Man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And he said that the gates of hell should not prevail against them. Mm -hmm. But he said, those that are on the outside, he said, be ye faithful unto death and you shall receive a crown of life. Mm -hmm. But the Lord said, you have to bore, everybody have to bore their sins and their nakedness before the Lord. So the ones that move forward, see, they was mocked and laughed at. Mm -hmm. The ones that came beforehand, they was laughed at. Mm -hmm. Just like we was ridiculed, we was laughed at. Nobody joined themselves unto us. But we had to bore our sins mm -hmm. in the daytime. Mm -hmm. For three and a half years. Mm -hmm. And people didn't think that it was necessary to do all of it at that time. Now you caught up in the midst of judgment. And the Lord said, I'm no longer dwelling in the midst of you anymore. Now you're going to have to seek and you have to come out to me. Hmm. But you're going to find out now what? The gates is, is, is closing. But the commandment is still the same. Because mm -hmm. yeah. he said the rest thereof and the food thereof is going to be in the mountain. Mm -hmm. So that means... At some point, you're going to have to do the journey. You can either do the journey at a, at, a, at, a, at a now, tough time, whatever, however the Lord has ordained it. But you first got to realize that we're in a time of judgment mm -hmm. right now. And you have to humble yourself unto the Lord and have a fear of the Lord in order for the Lord to lead you out. Mm -hmm. If you do not humble yourself and do not have that fear before the Lord, your enemies will overcome you mm -hmm. and destroy you. Mm -hmm. Then he said, when I resurrect you, then you're going to have a fear for me then. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to humble yourself at that time. Mm -hmm. But this is what is going to come because the word is already written. So this is what you're going to do. You're, gonna, you, you, you're not going to have respect or fear for God because the religion and the associations and the and the uh, uh, traditions that you're doing, you're associating that with God. And you don't know that this is actually against God. You don't know that this is revelings and, and uh, partying. And you don't know that, that you're serving gods. These are the traditions of gods that, that, that have entered into the church and you gave them a biblical name. So, therefore, the Lord said, I'm going to have to turn you over into the hands of your enemies, and they're going to destroy you. Then you will know who is of God and who is not of God. The most important thing of all is, like we said in the beginning, if you don't make Jesus Christ your mediator, who can save you out of all this? Mm -hmm. even, out of, even out of your death. Jesus, if, if you never believed in Jesus, if you never put your faith in Jesus, if you didn't, if you rejected Jesus, then how can he save you out of your death? And if he do, then you will know, after, but it will be after you, after you learn. So Jesus said, I'm the, I'm the resurrection. Mm -hmm. So you can't be resurrected without him. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm the resurrection. Go ahead. You got something to say? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, as we bring this to an end, we understand that in order to see God, Jesus had to lead you, lead you, lead you outside the camp. Mm -hmm. He had to lead you from the midst of the congregation. And you also have to understand that this world now is in the midst of judgment. Mm -hmm. And when we said in the last pre in the previous videos, once you get it in your mind that you're not going to do what the Lord say do, then immediately you enter into judgment. Mm -hmm. And that's what people that has put their mind to that what we're doing is righteousness. And they refuse to understand and follow the word of God. Therefore, judgment have come. And now the Lord has shut the doors to the churches, but you can reopen them. 
But the Lord had let you know that now the camp is out. Now, now the tabernacle is outside the camp. And if you want to seek the Lord, you're going to have to come outside the camp.